please turn with me to Hosea. Chapter 1, verses 2 through 9. Hosea, chapter 1, verses 2 through 9. When the Lord began to speak through Hosea, the Lord said to him, Go take to yourself an adulterous wife and children of unfaithfulness because the land is guilty of the vilest adultery and departing from the Lord. So he married Gomer, daughter of Dublin, and she conceived and bore him a son. Then the Lord said to Hosea, call him Jezreel because I will soon punish the house of Jehu for the massacre at Jezreel, and I will put an end to the kingdom of Israel. In that day, I will break Israel's bow in the valley of Jezreel. Gomer conceived again and gave birth to a daughter. Then the Lord said to Hosea, Call her Lo Ruhama, for I will no longer show love to the house of Israel, that I should at all forgive them. Yet I will show love to the house of Judah, and I will save them, not by bow, sword, or battle, or by horses and horsemen, but by the Lord their God. After she had weaned Lo Ruhama, Gomer had another son. Then the Lord called him Lo Ami, for you are not my people, and I am not your God. It is now a pleasure to introduce to you the pastor of the Concord Missionary Baptist Church, Dr. E. K. Vale. I've been honored to be called many things. But to be called Dr. E.K. Bailey is a special honor. Because most of you who have lived in and around the church you at least have heard of me Hosea is my name and preaching is my game Your pastor, who is on vacation, invited me to come today in his absence to share with you my testimony of how I, Hosea, the preacher, got hooked up with Goma the Hoochie. Excuse me? Did you just call me a Hoochie? I'm sitting in here today. In fact, if you didn't know it, here with these church folks. Y'all excuse me a minute. I got to say something to him. I got a name. She said my name. Goma, you didn't call me Hoochie when we first met. Yeah. Then I was hot. Yeah. And everybody else knew I was hot too. Now you here with your church folks, you call me a Hoochie. I'm going to take this. Right, right, Making right. me mad. Sitting in 
Now people with these church folks, they got their nose in the air. Like they smell it. They don't want to even touch your hand, don't want to say nothing. Y'all can't go on with your church folks. I'm out of here. Just make me mad. Well, as you can see, my challenge was not an easy one. This whole drama jumped off during the royal reign of Jeroboam. In the northern kingdom of Israel, between 750 and 725 BC. You see, Yahweh was upset because of how Israel had played him. Israel had dissed Yahweh by playing around with other gods. So God recruited myself and two other dudes, one dude named Amos and another dude named Micah. And he sent us to go represent him to the people. He always asked in his service to do some strange things. My odyssey began on a hot, sweltering, sweltering summer night. I had just completed one of my many crusades out there in the Mount Tabor Auditorium. And as I descended the heights of Mount Tabor, Suddenly I was engulfed like a whirlwind by a strange and invisible presence. This presence was so mysterious that I was at once both terrified and fascinated. He said to me, Hosea, I need to talk with you. Having been in this presence before, although rare, I knew that I was in the presence of the eternal one. Have you ever heard God speak? 